Hello, everyone. Today, I'm going to talk about Apache TVM. Um, so, uh, so to begin with, um, the, the problem that we are trying to solve and a lot of people are interested in is, you know, how do we effectively deploy machine learning models, including training and inference workloads onto uh, different kind of hardware backends? And this is usually a huge challenge faced by the community because uh, for a given model, there are different ways that we can deploy into different cloud kind of backends. For example, in the Intel, you need to handle Intel data instruction set. In a video case, there will be a video GPU CUDA program model. There are different kinds of program model and all kinds of different hardware that people need to tackle with. So there's a huge gap between the model deployment and hardware backends. Um, and not to mention, you know, if you want to support non general training workloads as well as the hardware combination, this is really tricky. So to give a sense of how machine learning compilation can solve this problem, let's first start to look at uh, what are the existing, well, what's the method taken by existing deep learning frameworks? So traditionally existing deep learning frameworks will uh, try to offload the operators of the high level frameworks onto different kind of hardware backends. And in order to do that, they will represent the high level computation in a form called the computational data flow graph where each of a color node here correspond to a high dimensional tensor operator. So the problem of this general approach is that for each of a high level color node in the computational graph, you will need to find a corresponding uh, hardware library operators uh, that implement this, uh, this, this uh, high level data flow node. For example, in the case of media devices, a typical library that people usually use is this uh, library called CUDN. So, the, and most of the existing frameworks like TensorFlow, PyTorch, and uh, as well as a few other frameworks will try to offload this high level data flow graph onto the low level CUDN library. So you might ask, what is the pro particular problem of taking this approach since this is the approach that taken by already by a lot of existing different frameworks. The main problem of this approach though, is that for each of the high level color node in a high level computational graph, they will, we will need to find them, uh, find them to be present in a low level library, in this case, UEM. So that implicitly translates to, we need to spend engineering effort to go and optimize those libraries. Of course, in the case of video, uh, there are already engineers who are, who are working on the CUDN library, but it's not necessarily true for other hardware vendors. Um, additionally, deep learning and machine learning is an evolving field. So we can find a lot of you know, new chances by adding new color nodes, in this case, adding new uh, operators. Um, sometimes we also want to perform system level optimizations. For example, one of the optimization that a developer might want to do is they can take the high level two nodes and try to fuse them together into this additional node. Normally this kind of operator fusion optimization will give you uh, quite decent speed up uh, because it reduces the amount of uh, run tripping to the global memory. Um, however, this new blue node is no longer available in a low level library. So, so that's the main problem that people will face. And, and this is quite tricky, right? Because, you know, what do you do if you want to uh, implement this blue node uh, if it's not in a low level library? So one way to do that is, you know, we can assign an additional engineer to go and implement that library. However, you can imagine that it's very, uh, it's very engineering intensive. And if we want to multiply that by the amount of hardware backends and the amount of, um, amount of hardware backends and the operators you want to implement, uh, that product space is really large and it creates a huge burden for implementing all those, uh, all those engineering effort on, on, on those hardware backends. So, the approach that TVM tries to take is we want to, we want to try to automate this process. Instead of, instead of using uh, humans to go and implement those low level libraries, we want to be able to automatically generate uh, low level libraries using a machine learning based program optimizer. And in particular, we want to be able to take the high level workloads and directly generate optimized program workloads for new operators and power. I don't have too much time into going into detail, but from a high level nutshell, the high level idea that we are we are taking is we want to be able to, you know, take a high level declaration of a, 
of an operator and define a third space, then the idea of uh, auto TVM is we want to be able to generate the new code, send it to the target have a backend for benchmarking, and use the and use that as a feedback loop to learn uh, cost models so that we can use a statistical cost model to drive the, the prediction of the, of the cost when, you, when we are trying to run a new operator. And, and there, are, there are more details in, in, in the paper. And this is where we started to build an end-to-end -end compilation flow for, uh, for running, you know, for being able to directly take high-level code and compile into low-level hardware backends. In particular, TBM is an end-to-end automate, automated compilation framework that allows us to take models from uh, frameworks like PyTorch TensorFlow, including MXNet, uh, import them into the, into the TVM framework, and then use a high-level differential optimization IR to optimize the high-level computation, and then use a uh, tennis expression optimization space that allows us to further optimize the the, the tensor express so the low level computation part of the uh, of the operator, and as a result, the combined effect of the high level and low level optimization allows us to directly take a model from some of the frameworks and offload them into the into the backend of interest. And in this case, TBM supports a wide variety of backend, including you know uh, all the major CPUs, GPUs. Uh, one of the interesting story that we had is, you know, uh, recently Apple Silicon just came out, and uh, you know, by using machine learning compilation, we can actually directly get support for Apple Silicon on those um, on using using TVM, so that we can directly run a lot of the novel machine learning work directly on your hub. And this is really powerful in a sense that it gives you an end-to-end -end framework that. Uh, that uh, tries to you know avoid as many manual effort as possible and try to bring in as as much automation as possible. So, so some of you might already know TVM and uh, heard about uh, similar talks several times. Um, and there are also involvement of you know there are also quite quite a lot of interesting interactions between a Mac community and TVM. And, and the other things. So, so today I'm going to focus on actually talking about some of the latest progress that community have been made. Um, so uh, I, I'm going to highlight four of the main areas the community have been working on in the, in the past one year. And um, of course, this is not not, not uh, uh, effort that done by a single person, but it's more a uh, collaborative effort from a lot of members in the community. So one of the first things that is quite exciting to the TVM machine learning compilation more recently is this new feature called automatic scheduling. So to recap, the auto TVM now will try to build a statistical cost model and trying to allow us to automatically search over parameters for a given, uh, for, for, for a given computation. However, one of the one of the problem here is that we still need to be able to manually define a set of templates so that for each of operators. So the idea is that the developer no longer have to specify how to Im implement all the details of operators, but we still need to be able to provide some of the details. One of the questions that automatic scheduling action tries to ask is can we try to also even get rid of the scheduled template uh, by altogether? And the answer is positive. Actually, the high level idea of, of automatic scheduling is that we want to be able to run a sketch generation action that, that takes in a test expression and generates potential program sketches. And those sketches are candidates to optimize a particular tensor operator. And now we can use a machine learning guided search to search over uh, the space of candidate sketches and try to fill in some of the specific uh, elements on each of the for loops here, the question, question mark. And then as a result, we will be able to use a two-phase approach to directly generate an operator search space and search over that through you from a single uh, tensor expression language, which allows us to describe uh, how do you compute each element of the target tensor. This is pretty powerful. And uh, it means that we no longer have to define a specific template for each of the uh, for, for each of the operators and we can try to directly infer 
the potential search space from the expression itself. And, and the, the automatic scheduling work is part of, is done by Lian Ming, who is a committer and PMC member of TVM community. And they had a paper on OSDI this year. So you are more than welcome to check it out. And again, one of the key thing here is I want to be able to automatically generate a hierarchical search space um, using sketch rules. The second thing that the community have been working very hard on is trying to bring in TVM to more wide variety of devices. In this sense, you know, a lot of things we talk about nowadays are how do you put your machine learning workload onto data centers, but also, you know, machine learning is also get smaller. You know, since we want to be able to put machine learning onto mobile devices as well as even more tiny devices that do not even have operation system support, like the, some of the microcontrollers. The main challenge of supporting those tiny devices is mainly because these uh, these devices have very limited resources, and normally there is no formal Linux support. If even if there's an RTOS like uh, operation system support the system calls supported by those operation systems are pretty limited. So traditionally, when, we, when we're trying to do all the micro TVM uh, by supporting TVM or microcontrollers, we faced several challenges, including we want to be able to uh, put some of our program into flash memory while some other dynamic data into DRAM. Most of the microcontrollers do not have dynamic loading. So we, we will need to work around that. And finally, there's a very, a stringent memory constraint. So we will need to be able to, uh, we, will need, we will need to be able to, you know, fit the programs onto limited memories that the microcontroller have. Last year, the community have been working very hard on bringing a new micro TVM based automation flow that allows us to directly reprogram the target microcontroller on a fly. And so that the target microcontroller will contain uh, executable that contains a minimum RPC runtime as well as as well as the generated program. The idea is that the RPC itself will communicate with the micro TVM runtime through a serial port, so that you know we can remotely send commands like you know load this load these libraries from the from the generated binaries, allocate arrays, and run things on the target hardware through the RPC server. In this way, we do not have to you know, run Python on the microcontrollers. Instead, we can run the same set of Python code on your laptop or any host machines you can, you can and remotely drive the microcontroller so that we can do things like remote benchmarking as well as things like auto-tuning on a remote device. Additionally, we bring in quite a lot of nice features, including things like storing, parameters on reading the data side. And there's also ongoing work on supporting a standalone C runtime so that, so that you know, we, we will be able to directly deploy a code generated by micro TVM or microcontroller in a standalone fashion without having to rely on RPC calls. Micro TVM is a significant step of a TVM community to invest on machine learning on a wide variety of devices. Along similar directions, there are also works on supporting things like WebAssembly and Web GPUs, uh, which shares a similar trait of microcontrollers in a sense that there are certain limitations of WebAssembly that we will have to get around. And TVM builds mechanisms into those cases to support um, building, deploying different programs onto those settings. The third thing that community have been working hard on in the last year is trying to bring a unified refactor of, uh, of the IR. One of the, one of the main goal and one of the main, main motivation behind the unified IR refactor the community worked on last year is that most of our machine learning frameworks like PyTorch or MaxNet do have a very clear uh, dissection of core data structure, operational primitives that try to transform across uh, transform those core data structures and, and also other automation multipliers that, that allows us to you know, quickly use one line to add additional powers on top of the core data structure and their transformations. For example, in the case of different frameworks, most of the uh, common operation that people support are the auto, auto grad operation. 
In the case of machine learning compilation, we want to do similar things. In a sense, we want to bring in machine learning compilation and also dissect ML compilation frameworks onto these key concepts, including core data structure, operational primitives, and automation multiplier. And in particular, in the case of TVM, we identify a core data structure, which is called IR module, that allows us to contain a collection of functions that, that are to be performed, to be transformed, or to be compiled. And there are also key operational primitives that allows us to transform across IR modules, which allows us to do functional or module level transformation. In this case, uh, the transformation paths are one kind. There are also another kind, which is the which is the schedule API that allows us to manipulate the hierarchical IRs. And finally, there are also additional features that we can bake in to bring in additional automations. This will include things like automatic scheduling we talked about before, as well as tensorization and other backend support. One of the goal of the unified error factor is actually trying to you know bring in, bring in out those key concepts. So that allows us allows the, the developer and user to quickly understand um, the, the key concept while being able to compose them together to build very powerful things. For example, a developer could uh, directly take IR module and transformations to build just time in just in time compiler for running deep learning models, or the developer could directly take IR module and trying to uh, and compilation steps to build in, to extend their own compilation frameworks. And there are a lot of interesting uh, use cases in this year's TBM conference around this uh, design. And in terms of a unified, after the new refactor, the, we, we have quite a few modules that are isolated out, including a standard runtime that are minimum and portable, a TIR module that allows us to do low level tense expression level optimization, and a relay module that allows us to do high level graph level optimization. By having those clear components, it allows us to uh, you know, further extend TVM to support new exciting features that are up upcoming. The third thing that we really pushed hard last year is actually trying to bake in first class Python support. And in this case, we really believe that you know, the, it's really important to empower our users, developers to be able to use TVM in the language that they like and the most mostly convenient of and in a lot of cases, we do find a lot of researchers wanted to quickly prototype a compilation path or compiler or code through Python. So in this case, TBM script is a Python uh, AST dialect that directly described any stage uh, of the IR, any, any stage of comp compilations in the syntax of Python AST. So one of the key goal of TBM script is to be able to not only Use as a front end so that developer can quickly present a potential um, tensor operation code they are interested in in this Python uh, ASD dialect, but also being able to transform and print out the result of a compilation. So, so that's exactly what we mean by being able to faithfully represent AI at any stage of compilation. So you will be able to write a TVM script, send build AI module from it, do some transformations on that AI module and print that out again as another TBM script and modify that further. We believe that this is an important feature for us to quickly prototype machine learning compilation because this is still a very young field and by making that accessible, we can enable more developers to be able to uh, try out machine learning compilation and developing new skills. More importantly, uh, we will be able to combine the additional things like machine learning libraries in Python to and, and even machine learning frameworks to be able to guide the to be able to guide the code generation process and making the code generation even smarter. One of the last thing that community had uh, have focused a lot on in the last year have been uh, accelerator support, and that have been reflected in a lot of the talks in this year's TVM conference. So if you look at the traditional modern compiler, most of the modern compiler nowadays will only have a single target. This include LVM GCC. Usually they had a target triple that tried to represent what target they want to compile on. And that single target will try to specify a single backend. Why it's totally fine for a normal compiler since most of the compiler only targets CPUs or machine learning or deep learning, usually this is not the case. For example, we might want to be able to make collective use of both CPU, GPU, and MPU when possible on a target hardware. 
So the, the target specification of the modern compilers really limit us to, to only be able to target a single device. In order to resolve that problem, we introduce a new target compositional mechanism that allows the developers to de declare a new target and compose, which is composed of uh, several targets. Uh, for example, in this case, uh, the target is composed of LVM CPU, CUDA, and MPU target. Additionally, TVM compiler will be able to split out the computations or into multiple components, invoke a custom code generation on, or for example, if you have a custom code general compiler for your MPU, TVM will be able to directly make use for that. And finally, you will be able to package uniformly. So from a user's perspective, after the compilation and packaging, the user sees a single binary that allows you to invoke as normal. And you, you wouldn't even realize that this is a, a function or this is a module backed by multiple hardware back. So the advantage of that is that, you know, um, if you have a new neural accelerator or if you have a new library to accelerate deep learning, you can directly bring that as a custom backend to TVM. While TVM handles the packaging as well as the, you know, as well as execution for, for you, so that you know, in many cases, MPU only handles a subset of a computations. And, and you can use TVM to generate the rest of the computations if necessary. Of course, there are a lot of exciting things in the past year that uh, it's not covered by this. For example, one of the things that committee have been working very hard on is bringing first class Rust support and we build a cross length runtime that allows us to have zero overhead access to the compiler from various of front ends. Additionally, the committee have been working very hard on web GPU and web assembly support. Uh, Qualcomm have recently contributed support to the Hexagon devices so that we can deploy machine learning models on Hexagon DSPs. It also works on supporting dynamic shapes, auto quantization, SPAS support, and front end coverage, and so on. So, uh, besides the latest progress, let me switch gear to talk a bit about you know, what are the future directions that we can work on in TVM. One of the things that uh, uh, we really care about is actually being able to support the latest and greatest tensor computational primitives in all those modern towers, including uh, you know, Amphir and Turing's tensor core, as well as other uh, neural accelerators that may support high dimensional tensor combinational primitives. The common characteristics of those uh, operators or those hardware primitives is that they usually, you know, traditionally when you try to write a program, you can just write a Scala program that computes each element of the target tensor. Uh, if you want to speed up a computation your model CPU, sometimes you will need to be able to rewrite your um, program in a vector instruction set, which is a bit harder. And if you look at things like the Voltas tensor core or other instructions, modern hardware is starting to get you know, higher dimensional instruction that allows you to execute a tensor vector or tensor tensor or matrix matrix applications in a single instruction. The challenge though is that unlike vector, which is still possible to enumerate all the possibilities, it's really hard to enumerate all the possible tensor operations if you don't know them beforehand. Additionally, it's very hard. Uh, usually each of the hardware backends have their own programming models to access those tensor operators. So the question we have is how can we build a system to support all those emerging tensor instructions? One of the goals that committee is working hard on in the next year is we want to try to unify the automatic scheduling and tensor validation. The idea is that not only want to be able to have high level model descriptions from those frameworks, we also want to be able to have an interface des description that describes the hardware interface. Uh, in this sense, you know, we want to be able to describe, for example, in the case of maybe a tensor core, what are the semantics of those tensor core instructions? And the goal of the automatic tensorizer and or tensorization of an automatic scheduler is to be able to take the model from a framework and the hardware description and try to transform the high level computations automatically and remap them to the hardware acceleration instruction. As a result, if we can unify automatic scheduling and tensorization, we might be able to you know, directly target those hardware like NVIDIA's tensor core without having to write in specialized code for them. Of course, this is a still open area and we are expecting to see a lot of progress you know, in coming years. The second thing that community have been working very hard on and which also resonates a lot with the 
current machine learning frameworks is the support of NumPy compatible array API. If you look at most of the machine learning frameworks, you can find actually most of the machine learning frameworks are deep learning frameworks in particular, like MX and TensorFlow, PyTorch, JAX, are frameworks of array computations. So in, in this sense, most of the framework elements can be divided into things like array uh, that represents array data structure, array computation that try to compute the each of the computation and automatic differentiation that get, gets us a gradient for a sequence of array computation. In order to support machine learning frameworks um, as a compiler backend, PBM will need to have a corresponding concept in each of the elements in here. For example, in the case of arrays, TVM have a, have a C API, C ABI data structure called DL tensor that we use to represent uh, the array in, in memory data structure. There's also a collection of array computation libraries called Topi, as well as auto automatic differentiation, differentiation support. One of the exciting thing in the going on in the frameworks is that you know it seems that more major frameworks are still starting to try to coming together and try to support a common standard of array API that converges across NumPy. And more recently, DL tensor is tentatively, tentatively adopted as the array API standard. That means that any of the operators compiled by TVM will be, you know, also shares the same standard for data structures exchange uh, used by TensorFlow, PyTorch, MXN, and a few other frameworks. And that means that, you know, we'll be able to directly generate code and those of the accelerated code will be able to directly plug in onto those major machine learning frameworks. Additionally, we're also trying to improve our support for array API so that we can get better standard coverage as well as supporting better uh, automatic differentiation on different levels, including the, in, including the graph level as well as the tensor expression level. One of the final things that we want to work very hard on is actually the accessibility of the framework itself. Uh, machine learning compilation is still a new field and uh, one of the misconceptions that people have is you, know, you need to know compiler knowledge in order to use machine learning framework, in, in order to use machine learning compilation. This is not true. And one of the reasons that why TVM is so widely used, they want to be able to make machine learning compilation accessible for everyone including machine learning scientists, among engineers, and those who do not necessarily know compilation. To do that, it's definitely very important to bring accessibility as the first part of the principle. And there are a lot of the efforts in the community that are working towards that goal. For example, the first class Python support, the, uh, the push button automations that we bring by out of auto TV and automatic scheduling, as well as the customization that we allow for different users. In the coming year, we will have more focused effort on supporting a stabilized API around the core concept, building tutorials for different user groups, and developing courses for machine learning compilation so that more people can learn about this automated techniques and use it, use it in their daily deployment scenario. So I've talked about the most of the technical perspectives. Let's, let me use the last few minutes to talk about the community perspective about TDM. TVM is, uh, is, a, is a, a, a project on the Apache Software Foundation. That means that it's a project like, like MXN and a few other projects that are on the ASF, means that there will be an independent governance and allow multiple parties to collaborate. And one of the key principle in here is we want to be able to not only open, source, open the source code, but also do open development, open governance, which means that you know, all the development are recorded on a public mail list. Um, and, uh, and discuss forums so that anyone who want to join the, join the discussion development can, can start from any time point. And the, the committer model means that anybody who have made suspect, uh, who have earned the merit in the community will be able to you know, get a committership and have a say on what the projects will be going. In the last year working on the Apache way, the TVM community have grown tremendously and uh, and since you know since the since last year's conference, the number of contributors have grew by fifty percent. And one of the very exciting things is that more recently, the Apache Software Foundation have announced that TVM have been uh, have matured and graduated as a top level Apache project. This is a really exciting moment for TVM community, and we are looking forward to communicate to work together with all the other open source communities 
uh, to build a better machine learning compilation for everyone. So uh, we've talked about machine learning compilation and let me also spend the last few minutes to talk about you know, some of the final thoughts on how machine learning compilation and machine learning frameworks can interact together. Frame, machine learning frameworks have solved a very important problem to you know, allow scientists to run their workloads everywhere. However, as we start to try to support more hardware backends, like for example, you know, even different variants of GPUs, like NVIDIA, AMD, Apple's uh, MacBook, the latest Apple, Apple Silicon, there are a lot of variations in the hardware backend, which makes it really hard to you know, bring in a dedicated effort to support them. Machine learning compilation is one very nice way to abstract that away and try to automate more of that. In order to do that, machine learning frameworks can try to build a just-in-time compilation backend from uh, those major compilers like TVN, or in the case of deploying to embedded devices, build a head of, a head of time compilation solution to take the model from the uh, machine, learning, machine learning frameworks like MSN and, and TensorFlow and PyTorch and be able to generate deployable modules that you can run on the target platform that you are interested in. If you are interested more to hear more about TVM, it, we had an annual developer conference and it happens um, in December, it happened in December and all the recordings are now uh, online available at tvmconference.org. So you are more than welcome to check it out. With that, I will, I will be more than happy to take any question. Thank you.